Buying your first car is a momentous moment. And while your heart might want a Ferrari, your budget probably won't stretch to it. The perfect partner for new drivers has got to be fun, frugal and fashionable and have an insurance price that won't bring on an early heart attack. Here are three of the best and most popular cars for new drivers with a monthly PCP price of around £150. This is the Toyota iGo, and although it's been knocking around since 2005, this revised version feels fresh and funky and proves that refinement can come in small packages. This is the Skoda Citygo, which shares a platform with the VW Up and Say At Me. That means they're the same car underneath, but just have a different body on top. All three are reasonable to buy, cheap to run, and sit in the lowest tier insurance groups, which is obviously really important as a new driver. On top of that, they all drive well, are practical, value for money, and have a decent level of refinement and quality. Hyundai's i10 is from South Korea, and it's the only one here that's not available with a three-door body. Now, with Hyundai, it's worth keeping an eye out for deals on deposits, low interest finance, and fixed price servicing schemes. It's not difficult to find a good driving position with a steering wheel and a seat that both adjust for height. Now in this particular model, there's also a height adjustable seat belt to fine tune your perfect fit. The cabin itself isn't as colorful as it is in the other cars, but the dash is simple and all the buttons are clearly labeled. The generally high level of kit in this little car gives it a big car feel. There's a lovely new seven inch infotainment system, which works really well. We've got Apple CarPlay, big tick there. And these plastics, yeah, it's very plasticky, but they're fun. The Citigo's charm lies in its simplicity, and that is very evident in here. It's fuss-free, uncluttered, any buttons there are are clearly marked and easy to use. The interior is high quality, sophisticated, and it's easy to get comfy and visibility is good in every direction. The only thing that's a bit annoying is that the steering wheel doesn't adjust for reach on every model. The cost of insurance is a big concern these days for young and new drivers. So plenty of companies offer telematics and black box based devices, which go in your car and report back on your driving activities and habits. And if you are deemed to be a sufficiently responsible driver, you can lower your insurance premium. We've downloaded one called the Aviva Drive app today, which will determine just how responsible we are as drivers. In the driver's seat. Yes. With a whole 60 horsepower <laughs> behind me. <laughs> it's the least powerful in the Citigo range and it's also the least powerful of the three cars that we've got today. But it takes top honours in having the highest top speed of 101 miles an hour. There is plenty of power to keep up with traffic around town and it does have the best handling chassis in the class. This is a great car to drive. A base spec Citigo gets you a normal radio. I thought everyone did DAB these days, but there you go. USB port, two speakers, two speakers, aux in and Vix CD player. Oh, We're back on the same page, yeah. baby. But upgrade to SE trim, and that brings a colour display, Bluetooth connected, and more speakers, which I feel will be needed. Now, most people want a touch screen, but I like this arrangement. I can definitely feel that this car's got the most firm suspension out of the three. Um, there's some interesting little side nets on the side of your seats here. I think it's because there aren't really many pockets around in this car. The most important factor in here is that you get an umbrella underneath the passenger seat. Oh, you do! <laughs> like a <ta> -da! <laughs> I'd like to bring up warranties at this point, if I may. Would you? I would. And I'd like to say that Skoda gives the most stingy warranty at three years, and the other two cars have it for five years. Boo! There goes your cornering app badge, by the way. All the cars have got small three-cylinder, one-litre engines mm. with five-speed manual gearboxes. Ding, ding. Um, and this is the slowest to 62 miles an hour, taking... 14.7. But it is the most refined of the three on motorways. Now, fuel economy isn't great at 55 mpg, mm. but it has got lots of room in here for mm. my two lovely friends, plus anyone else we fancy lassoing off the pavement. Yeah, I'm sitting in the middle seat, and the fact that there are three seat belts and three seats available is very rare in this class. Also, the Hyundai's got the biggest boot. Tech-wise, 
they spec you get a radio and not much else but there's a really decent amount of tech available further up the range you get DAB and Bluetooth on SE trim upwards and then from there you get a touch screen and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto Erin as well in the back I love the fact that it's got the seatbelt buckle holder to keep them out of the way yes which means that when you're loading stuff in and you need to get the back seats down it doesn't catch in the old seatbelts very handy one last corner Smoothly, oh, yeah. smoothly, 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 and stop recording the journey. Vicky Butler Henderson, you've been awarded your first drive badge. Well done. This car, this Toyota Igo, has some pretty impressive statistics as they go in this class. It's the most powerful with a whopping 69 horsepower. Uh, it's the quickest to 62 miles an hour, but over half a second, a mere 13.8 seconds. It has the best fuel economy, 68 miles per gallon, and the lowest CO2 emissions, 93 grams per kilometre. Mm. But it lacks the long distance comfort of the Hyundai uh, and the agility of the Skoda. Mm -hmm. uh, unaccustomed as I am to being in the seat, here's something You're dealing Rachel, with it so well. Here's something Rachel prepared for me earlier. <laughs> Such a Base spec, it does get you DAB radio, which I think is really important for young drivers. Um, you get a USB port and an auxiliary in. Further up, you can get Android also or Apple CarPlay, which is what this has got. We're doing very well. Thank you so much. Mm. And it's very easy to use, but not quite so easy to use from your driving position when you're on the move, because it could be a bit fiddly. And it's got quite a small couple of knobs. Are you going to say that? Yeah. Also unaccustomed to being in the back, but there's only two seats in this one compared to the i10. Um, you do still have the little seatbelt clips though for putting your seat down. Oh, which I love is them. Nice. They're becoming standard these days. Yeah. And while I'm here, I feel we should talk about the safety of these little machines. Good. So this car has the highest rating for pedestrian protection. So if you could just drop me off on the pavement while you're driving, Erin. Yeah, yeah, I'll be out there too. <laughs> <laughs> the Skoda has the best rating for driver protection and all three have the same rating for child protection. Hmm. Right, Rach, give us the news of how I Fuel friendly. Bingo. Your style of driving is fuel efficient, which is good news for your budget. It isn't just. Parking in a bay is one manoeuvre you might get asked to do in your driving test. Here's how we do it. <laughs> Feeling those same nerves from a driving test. And mirrors. There we have it. Now this will be easy because I have got a reversing camera. I have no idea why people need a reversing camera on a car this small. But there you go, I have one. I shall use it. There we go, in the space. If you want a roomy city car that's the most refined on dual carriageways and motorways, go for the Hyundai i10. If you want a seriously good all-rounder that ticks all the boxes for a new driver, then go for the Skoda Citygo or the VW up, or say at me. And if you want reliability, sharp looks, or good levels of equipment, it's the Toyota iGo.